Would Jesus vote Republican or Democrat? How you answer that question almost certainly depends on your own political ideology. Now, historically, it's an impossible question to answer. First, pinning down what Jesus actually said is one of the enduring challenges of New Testament scholarship. The Gospels were written decades after the death of Jesus, and scholars are constantly debating which sayings we can trace back to Jesus himself and which ones were changed by later editors. If it's so hard to figure out his authentic sayings, just imagine how much more difficult it would be to figure out his views on modern political issues. Moreover, Jesus lived in a dramatically different political and economic context, the ancient Roman Empire. So even when he does seem to make statements that we might interpret as political commentary, like rendering taxes unto Caesar, it'd be simplistic at best and inaccurate at worst to make a direct comparison to today, considering the very different political contexts. But what did you think when I asked that question? A team of sociologists recently found that one of the strongest predictors of where Americans locate Jesus ideologically is their own ideological identity. The researchers asked Americans on a scale from 1 to 10, where would you place Jesus on an ideological spectrum, 1 being extremely left-wing and 10 being extremely right-wing? And here's what they found. The dark bar here represents all Americans, but the researchers also broke out Christians and non-Christians in the study to see if religious affiliation plays a role in these ratings at all. Christians are here in white and non-Christians in gray. Right away, you'll notice that big spike in the middle. Over 40% of all Americans think that Jesus is a centrist, with around 25% of Americans placing him slightly left of center at a 5, and just over 15% putting him at slightly right of center at a 6. This spike can also be seen if we focus only on Christians and non-Christians as well, though Christians are twice as likely as non-Christians to say Jesus is extremely right-wing, and non-Christians are more likely to rate him as left-wing. But the raw numbers don't tell the whole story. Digging into the results, they found something surprising. Quoting one of the researchers, the sociologist Samuel Perry, the ratings are almost all about politics, and almost nothing to do with being religious or even Christian. The sociologists not only measured the respondents' religious identity, but they also measured their religiosity, things like how often they attend religious services, how often they pray, how important is religion to them personally. And they found that both of these characteristics, a person's religious affiliation and their level of religiosity, had little to do with how that person rated Jesus on the right-left spectrum. When it comes to affiliation, they found the ratings of Christians and non-Christians do not appear statistically distinguishable when accounting for shared political ideology. In other words, left-leaning Christians and left-leaning non-Christians rated him the same, and on the flip side, right-leaning Christians and right-leaning non-Christians rated him the same. The political ideology is the common denominator, not religious affiliation. Religiosity also had very little effect. It doesn't matter if you're a Christian that goes to church all the time or never. It doesn't matter if they're highly committed to Christianity or not. If an American Christian is very conservative, they'll rate Jesus as very conservative, regardless of their own commitment and vice versa for liberal Christians. Again, political ideology is the common denominator, and not one's level of religiosity. These conclusions mirror what other sociologists have called projection. People project their values onto their gods, and onto Jesus in particular in the U.S. For example, a study from 2011 showed that American Christians, both on the left and right, tend to believe that Jesus Christ holds the same policy preferences that they hold. They asked a sampling of American Christians how they would rate his support for a variety of political issues gay marriage, taxation on the wealthy, or access to abortion. The researchers had them rate his views on a scale from 1 to 100, 1 being he holds an extremely liberal position on the issue and 100 an extremely conservative view on the issue. Here were the results for taxation on the wealthy. The darker bar represents how respondents characterize their own beliefs, and the gray bar how they characterize the beliefs of Jesus. Remember, a higher bar indicates a more conservative opinion. So in this case, liberals think Jesus is lower on the scale and would hold an extremely liberal position on the issue. Conservatives think he would hold a more conservative opinion. Interestingly, when it comes to this question, both liberals and conservatives assume Jesus would be slightly more liberal than themselves. But at the same time, both sides assume that he would generally align with their own respective side. For other issues like banning gay marriage, both liberals and conservatives assume that Jesus would be slightly more conservative. But again, both sides still assume that Jesus would generally agree with them. 
The researchers concluded that American Christians project their own views of specific political issues onto those of Jesus, and they went on to argue that people make these projections in an effort to reduce cognitive dissonance, the psychological discomfort that we feel when holding multiple conflicting opinions at the same time. In other words, the notion that Jesus might not agree with your politics causes so much discomfort that you reduce that discomfort by projecting your values onto him. Oh, Jesus would definitely agree with my tax policy, no worries. This corroborates another study that found that America Americans tend to be more egocentric when estimating God's beliefs about a political issue, when compared to estimating the average American's opinion on the same issue. Like if I asked you what the average American thinks about abortion access, chances are you'll try to intuit the answer using your own beliefs as a guide. But people also rely on other methods, like stereotypes like Texans are conservative or Californians are liberal. Or maybe they'll rely on actual knowledge about the issue, like public opinion polling or a recent election result. But when it comes to intuiting the thoughts of God, the respondents' answers in the study were much more strongly correlated with their own opinions. As the researchers put it, inferences about God's beliefs are not readily available. One can quiz neighbors on their beliefs, read editorials about celebrities' positions, or observe public opinion polls. But religious agents do not lend themselves to public opinion polling. These studies align with something that scholars of religion have been theorizing for over a century. Religion reflects society. In his book, The Elementary Forms of Religious Life, the sociologist Emile Durkheim argued that religious symbols, sacred stories, rituals, and gods are representations of society itself. They reflect the concerns and values of that society. The scholar Russell McCutcheon summarizes his theory well. Durkheim understood claims about God to be a way in which participants projected outside themselves their sense of the group's own needs. When religious insiders make claims about God's wishes and God's judgment, these are symbolically coded talk about society's wishes and society's judgments. Philosophers have been saying something similar for centuries. The Greek philosopher Xenophanes once said that if horses could draw, they'd paint their gods like horses. And the sociologist in the study quoted the 17th century philosopher Spinoza. A triangle, if it could speak, would likewise say that God is eminently triangular, and a circle that God's nature is eminently circular. But Durkheim was among the first to build a systematic naturalistic field of study examining these claims, and his theories are widely held by scholars of religion today arguing that religious talk turns out to be society talk. Or to put a finer point on it, God talk turns out to be society talk. It gets tricky though. These studies might lead us to conclude that people simply create their gods in their own images. But sometimes it seems to be the other way around. Sometimes someone's image of God influences their opinions. This is what sociologists call images of God research. These are studies arguing that people's ideas about God shape political views and values. So for example, do you think Jesus is hypermasculine? Well, studies have found that people who believe in a hypermasculine God increases support for militarism and more severe forms of criminal punishment, including support for capital punishment. Other studies have found that belief in supernatural evil, like belief in Satan or hell, is also a strong predictor of supporting more severe criminal punishments. Another study found that people who see God as more judgmental are less likely to volunteer in their communities. And on the flip side, those who think of God as less judgmental are more likely to volunteer. Now, scholars still debate about the cause and effect going on here, or the causal direction if we want to use the fancy term. Are political identities influencing Americans' images of God, or are images of God influencing people's political identities? The authors of this ideological spectrum study argue for the former, the projection theory. Since they found that religious affiliation and religiosity seem to have little effect on people's ratings, they agree with the perspective that societies largely project their biases and values onto their gods, though they are careful to say that they did not definitively demonstrate a causal direction in this study, so it doesn't necessarily contradict images of God research. But while these studies continue, this much seems clear. Americans will continue to try to recruit Jesus to their side of the aisle, as the US has reached record levels of polarization in recent years. And and I'm not just saying that based on vibes. Just to quote one of the many studies with these findings, America has reached record high levels of polarization and is now excessively polarized. Which does not sound like a good thing. And I place a lot of the blame on social media, which filters us into echo chambers and rewards content heavily laced with ideological bias. Which is why I'm always excited to introduce today's sponsor, Ground News. 
Ground News is a website and app developed by a former NASA engineer on a mission to give readers an easy, data-driven, objective way to read the news. They aggregate stories from a bunch of different media outlets and pair those stories with a quick visual breakdown of the political bias, factuality, and ownership of the sources reporting. As a religion news buff, I'm always happy to see that they have dedicated categories for religion news. So clicking on the Christianity category, one of the biggest recent stories in the US is how Easter happened to fall on March 31st this year, which since 2009 also happens to be Transgender Day of Visibility. So here Ground News has aggregated 105 media outlets covering this story. The story was picked up slightly more by right-wing sources at 39% of the coverage, but we also see 35% centrist coverage and 27% on the left. With a click of the button, you can compare headlines too. On the right, Biden's sloppy Easter message. And on the left, GOP blasts Biden for following White House tradition. And over here, you'll find the factuality ratings. 42% of the sources are rated as highly factual, 48% as mixed. And just to be clear, Ground News does not make these factuality determinations themselves. All are backed by ratings from three independent organizations that monitor the news. One of my favorite features is called My News Bias, which is basically a dashboard for your news diet. It shows you your personal reading trends over time, from specific news outlets that you tend to favor and their political bias. If you'd like to give Ground News a try, Ground News is giving Religion for Breakfast viewers 40% off their Vantage plan. Go to ground.news slash religion for breakfast or click the link in the description below to get started and support an independent news platform working to make the media landscape more transparent.